Christian raised three, co three questions on my mind. First, if any of you win actually in this discussion, what kind of problem in Muslim and the Christian society will be solved? Second, you don't think so this kind of old discussion direct people away from the problem which they are facing right now, such as racism, um, and equality of women and men and, and etc. And the third is one question, please. They are one so question, please. Thank you. Okay. Uh, my dear brother, I don't know whether you're talking as a Muslim or as a Christian. Are you a Muslim or a Christian? Or are you neither? What are you? Uh, I don't think it's very important Excuse me. To, to, no, to know me. I'm no, Muslim no. or Christian. You see? Because you are neither fish nor fowl. You're not a fish and you're not a fowl. And you're asking a question. Why don't you identify yourself whether you are a Christian? Then I can tell you this is the foundation of Christianity. Next, we'll have a question from you. And if you're a Muslim, I said, this is what the Quran says. You are supposed to go and tell people, Wama kataluhu, wama salabuhu, that they didn't kill him and they didn't crucify him. Either way. So, you are neither fish nor fowl. I don't think you deserve an answer. Okay. Um, go ahead. Would it be all right if I read that passage? No, you have to, you have to make your question. Okay, um, the question is, in chapter 21-1 in the book of Genesis, it says, And the Lord visited Sarah, and the Lord did unto Sarah, and, and Sarah conceived as, as the Lord has promised. So why don't the Christians also believe that Isaac was son of God? Perhaps I can explain that by my own example. My father was 63 when I was born, and I was not expected. But I came and answered to prayer, and God visited our family, not in a miraculous virgin birth, but in enabling my mother and my father to have a son in their old age. Thank you. Do you have a question for Sheikh Didat up in the aisle? Yes. Yeah. Go ahead, please. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, because I couldn't ask Mr. Uh, our guest, Mr. Wakefield, I'm going to ask Sheikh Ahmed Didat. Mr. Hamdidat, brother, can you tell us how can a man die in five hours when he is on the cross? We know that um, for a man to die in a cross, it's going to take him at least two or three days. That's one. The second thing. That's it. No, no. It's next, just, uh, just, just, next question. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, as a Muslim, I know like we don't support anything about gay, but the Christian faith. Right now, I know they're divided. Some bishops still support about gay. So what do you think about them? Now, w would you pardon me by not say I didn't quite get your, I have a bad accent too, so I'm not reflecting on you, understand? Yeah. What I mean is, Right now, in this society, yes, yes. the Christianity, they divided, and there are some bishops supporting the gay society. Personally, you, what do you think about them, their bishop and their gay society? All right, I, I'll speak very frankly on that. The Bible, the Word of God, is very specific against the gay society. And the bishop or the church or the minister who says he supports sodomites as being blessed by God is, and I say this kindly, cursed by God. Do you have a question for Sheikh Dida? Do you have a question? Go ahead, please. Mr. Dida, we are now in uh, 1994. Uh, the crucifixion. And obviously, everybody is agreeing that it never occurred, or at least that's what your premise is. The best person to 
asked would be an eyewitness concerning what actually happened. And if we actually could bring him back in time and put him in this place as an eyewitness, that would be, of course, the best witness. And we would have to agree, yes, this did occur. We have a, a testimony of not only 12, but over 500 people who literally saw him, touched him, handled him. Each of them, uh, the original 12 apostles, of the 12, 11 gave their lives as a testimony saying that yes, he did die, he, did, he was buried, he did rise again. They all are the best witnesses. If we were to bring them in this, this Colosseum, they would be the best witnesses. How can you therefore cast aside the greatest witness uh, in support that not only did they give their lives in sacrifice as martyrs, but they would never die to defend a lie, how can then you say that their testimony is invalid? My dear brother, better than getting those people back from the graves and asking them, you have a written record, which nobody can go against. It's already written there in black and white, and this is your witnesses. And according to these witnesses of yours, we are questioning them that Jesus is telling you that a spirit has no flesh and bones and that the resurrected body gets spiritualized. That's also your witnesses tell you that. The resurrected bodies get spiritualized. Paul says that, if you remember, he says that which is sown, what you sow, a person who's dead and you sow, you sow him in, that means you bury, he's sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a physical body, it is raised a spiritual body. Then Jesus also testifies to that fact that the resurrected bodies will be spiritualized. In the Gospel of St. Luke, they come to Jesus and they ask him the question. He said, Master, in the Hebrew language, Rabbi, there was a woman among us and that woman has seven husbands according to a Jewish practice that if one brother that dies and he's got no offspring, then the second fellow takes her to wife. And when he fails and if he dies, the third fellow and the fourth and the fifth and the sixth and seven guys, Jesus, telling Jesus that seven guys had this one woman. They had her. This is what the Bible says. Seven had her. There was no problem on this earth because it was all one by one one after the other. But they want to know from him that at the resurrection, which guy is going to have her because they all had her here. Because once you have a woman, that closeness is created. You recognize her on the other side. He says, my wife, my pro, my dear, my sweetheart. There'll be a war in heaven between the seven brothers fighting for this one woman. That's the picture they are giving him. They want to know which guy is going to have her on the other side, because they all had her here. This is scriptural language. They all had her, they want to have her on the other side. In answer to that, Jesus says, neither shall they die anymore. Once you are resurrected, you'll be, they will be immortalized. This is a mortal body, which has got its mortal needs, food, shelter, clothing, sex, rest. Without these things, no Pakistan is left, no Red Indians left, no Canadians, nobody. No Europeans, no Irishmen, nobody. <laughs> nobody left. Also, no Sikhs, no more Sikhs. You know. All will be Sikhs. You know. <laughs> no. Neither shall they die anymore, for they are equal unto the angels. Meaning, once they are resurrected, they will be angelized, they'll be spiritualized, they'll be spiritual creatures, they'll be spirits, for they are equal unto the angels and the children of God. For such are the children of the resurrection. Spirits! Jesus says, a spirit has no flesh and bones, as you see me have. I'm not what you're thinking. What's wrong with you fools? Handle me and see. Handle me and see. For a spirit has no flesh and bones, as you see me have. What is he proving? And they believe not for joy, the Bible says. I'm only quoting. And they believed not for joy, means they were overjoyed and wondered what happened, man. We thought the man was dead and buried. 
So he said, have you here any meat, something to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and a honeycomb, and he took it, and he ate in the very side to prove what? That is a spirit, he's a ghost, he's a spook. What is he proving? He said, I'm a same fellow man, damn fools. What are you afraid of me for? And again and again, you find in the experience, he never showed himself to the Jews. If he had conquered death, if he had res was resurrected, he would have conquered death. He would have gone to the temple of Jerusalem and told the Jews, here I am. Remember I told you the sign of Jonah? What is going to happen to happen to me? Here I am. I say, we'll kill you. I say, go ahead and do what you like. But because he's resurrected. You can't kill a resurrected body. Because the Bible says it is ordained unto all men once to die and after that the judgment. You can't die twice. So the man would have been invincible and he would have proved his case. But instead he's ever in hiding, he's ever in disguise because he had escaped death by the skin of his teeth. In all fairness to the people who are standing behind you, I will reiterate that if you have a question, it has to be directed alternately to the speakers, and it, have to, it has to be one question only and as short as possible. No statesman will be allowed. Do you have a question for Bishop Wakefield? No. Yes, I do. Microphone number two, do you have I a question? Do. Go yes, ahead, I please. Do. General, General Wakefield, the Bible and the Quran says you will not write the book with your own hand, accord, with your own hand according to your needs. 